Well, I promised the women that we were going to have a little facial secret. Yes. And with me now is uh, Jamie Lee Metz. And you have a spa, a, a skincare spa in town. Yes. And, mm -hmm. But you have developed a process called Dermaplane. Yes, correct. And what exactly is to remove hair, facial hair? Yes, well, it came about because we found that women these days are busy. So they wanted something that's fast, that's effective, and, and also cost effective, too. So um, we developed this. We've been doing it for 12 plus years. I've had my skincare center for 15 plus years. And what it does is we, um, it's a cosmetic exfoliation of the skin. Um, in a way, a little bit like microdermabrasion, but the plus side to this is we have the, the ability to address the skin a little more deeply if we want to. Additionally, we take off all the vellus hair, which is sort of the peach fuzz that sits on women's faces that they usually see in the summertime. So it, it creates a, an open surface that we can deliver products into and that their makeup sits down really beautifully. So, so how do you go about doing this? You put a product on the face and how does that work? Well, we, yeah. we have all of those, of course. Yeah. Um, but what, what we typically do is we have a proprietary process that I've developed over 12 plus years. Um, there is, dermaplaning is out there. It's not a brand new concept. It's just not a well-known concept. And so, in fact, geishas have been doing it for hundreds of years. It's one of the ways that they kept those beautiful porcelain complexions and their makeup sat so beautifully. In fact, it was even rumored that Marilyn Monroe and um, Elizabeth Taylor did it, but it was sort of taboo. So in effect, it's, it's a shaving of the face, um, but we're doing it in a, um, in a fashion that allows for the hair to grow back more slowly and also to get rid of the dead skin cells so that we can penetrate products in a, a more efficient way. How long does it take to go through the process? Well, that's one of the unique things about what we're doing, is that we're doing it, um, in some places you'll find it, it will take them over an hour. There's usually some downtime, cryotherapy, scalpels involved, and harsh chemicals. With our process, we've been able to do this in under 10 minutes. And so the way we do that, again, is, is um, having this experience over this many years, I've been able to develop a process mm -hmm. that allows people um, to go right back to their lives. So it's, it's a very short process. Process, but we get an extraordinary result. Okay, but you're using terms that maybe hmm. people aren't aware of. Okay. Uh, cryotherapy, for instance. Cryotherapy yes. is the freezing of, uh, and there's, there's cryofacials that people get, right? Well, there, yes, there's right, those as which, well. Which uh, mm -hmm. reactivates um, the collagen in the skin. See, look at you. Well, <laughs> my right. goodness. So, so yes, there's that. Because I get it on my body for inflammation. Yes, yes. Yeah. And so um, it's one of the technologies that's often used with facials, but it typically um, creates a little bit of downtime. And so with women these days and being active with children with the careers, they often don't have the time for the downtime but we can create um, very similar results over time so they don't have to walk away from their busy lives, they can continue to go on. And to answer your question, cryotherapy is essentially using cold to, um, to, to create a little bit of um, uh, a burn to the skin, a very light burn to the skin so that it lifts and peels and exfoliates. So we're able to lift and peel and exfoliate without the cryotherapy. Now, when you talk about facials, you know, men kind of think, oh, that's a, a female thing. Mm -hmm. But it's not necessarily true. I mean, a, a great percentage of your business is male, right? It is. And as a matter of fact, what's interesting is men do have, there's still a little bit of a perception that it's like for women. Mm -hmm. But once we get them in and we have the opportunity to treat them, they're hooked. They're into it. So, yeah, it, it's great fun for us. How often do you, should, should uh, a man get a facial? You know, I recommend as often as your budget allows, ultimately. We have some women that come every week. They like that. Um, in fact, dermaplaning, you could do it as much as every week. But more often than not, it takes two to three weeks or four to six weeks. And then on average for facials, um, we find that it's about every four weeks for most people. That's about the cell turnover rate in a younger person. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And when you talk about um, women and, and facials and skin, it seems like you know, it starts in uh, their teen years. Um, you know, I have a lot of daughters, <laughs> and they all went through that, you know, that middle school process, mm -hmm. you know, wearing it out their pimples and their face, and, and you know, so how, you know, what can you do for teenagers? Well, there's a lot we can do. In fact, that's how I started, essentially. 
is I worked for four different years trying to get my skin to clear up using the products that were that were traditionally available and in those days there there wasn't a lot mm -hmm. and I couldn't I, I just couldn't fix it so I ended up going to an esthetician and I finally after one treatment came away with my skin clearing up so that sort of started me on the process and I modeled early in my life and and continue that process but when it comes to teenagers if you start early and set them up right not with a lot um, but uh, just a few basic things that they can stick to and be consistent with they're going to get great results and if they're not getting great results ultimately it, there, there might be a, a part in there that needs to be addressed meaning dermatology um, sometimes it's hormones and you have to address the inside and the outside yeah, yeah sometimes All right. Uh, name of your spa is Skin Fitness. Skin Fitness, Las Vegas, yeah. Mm -hmm. Over at Lake Mead and uh, and uh, the 95, not everything. Yeah, right? exactly. Mm -hmm. um, hair, you know, there's rumors about hair, and people are always <laughs> reluctant to, you know, get things waxing and things on their face because they're afraid that hair is going to grow back in coarser than yeah. how it was. Yeah, how you know, and it's a, it's. I'm glad you brought that up because it's, it's a big misconception actually. Um, where there's coarse hair to begin with, we're not going to change it. The only way to change it is through laser hair removal, which literally eradicates the, um, it, it cauterizes the follicle. Um, there's electrolysis, same thing, cauterizes the follicle. Waxing lifts it out and over time it, it starts to shrink up a little bit so the hair comes in thinner. And then um, threading, similar kind of thing, it starts to come in a little bit thinner but it doesn't go away. Um, with the other, the first two methods, both the electrolysis and the laser hair removal, you actually, like I said, you cauterize that follicle. With what we're doing, we're taking it off at the surface. But what is, is, so if it's vellus or peach fuzz, as most women know it, then what will happen is that's what comes back, and it's very slow growing. But if it's coarse, it's going to come back. Can you do that, that, that procedure also, like on fingers and toes and, you know, or those other areas that, that people seem to want to wax, especially women want to wax off? You know, yeah. I would suggest for those types of areas right. that we stick to either waxing or my favorite's laser hair removal. I mean, to me, that is the gold standard because we can remove it. I mean, like, why, why mess with it? I mean, mm -hmm. that's why it's popular to begin with. Is once it's gone, it's gone. Right. So you have no shadow left, which is beautiful. Whereas with um, some forms of waxing and um, um, threading and those kinds of things, you're left with a shadow, like a five o'clock shadow, like a man would have. So women get it under their arms or on different body parts, and it's just nice not to to look like a you know clean and clear. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And of course, you know, you need to go to somebody who's qualified because the uh, ethnicity of somebody is a really important uh, ingredient on. The process that you do use, because um, you know everybody has different kinds of skin, and there's different techniques for each type. So, exactly. um, dermaplaning. Yes. Okay. So, hey, if you're interested in more information on dermaplaning, derm dermaplaning, you can visit her website. Jamie, thank you very much for being here. Thank you. It's a pleasure. And see you next week.